Hello everybody, welcome back. Jordan here. Today we're going to be taking a detailed look at the Lego Haunted Manor, which is done by Dream Build Bricks on Rebrickable.com. It uses 4,003 pieces. You can see that we've got all of those pieces organized by part type here. And we're about to get started building this Disney-inspired mock, so it's going to be pretty awesome. So of course you can find these instructions on Rebrickable.com. If you just search Haunted, it's actually the top result, which is the Haunted Manor done by Dream Build Bricks. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Down here you can see that this is master builder difficulty. And let me tell you, after building it, I do concur with that. It's <laughs> definitely got to be an experienced builder to build this, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, there's some good photos here comparing it to the Disney Castle. Of course, the interior, the exterior, and of course, we'll have a look at our completed model right now. So here we have the amazing Lego Haunted Manor. Wow. It is a breathtaking corner modular building that's bigger than your average modular. It's approximately 15 by 15 inches. Near the end of this review here, I'll compare it to uh, base plates. The 48 by 48 gray base plates and also 32 by 32 base plates. So you can see there's a large courtyard here just out front of the very nice entrance of the Haunted Manor here. It's got the lanterns on either side. Sand green windows, all sorts of different bricks and tan, nougat and dark tan. And we have the tower poking out the top here. The roof has all sorts of slope elements and has a nice texture with all of these modified one by one plates with the upward clips. And of course you can see some spooky spider webs on there with some spiders and also a snake right there beside the chimney. It's an unreal build with some really nice angles. Lots of different textures all over the building. And on this side over here, we've got some nice arched windows. And also a greenhouse. Built using all of the different sand green windows. Once again, some nice textures added to it with all of the clip elements. It's got a yard just out front of it. We've got some statues. Missing one of the heads, unfortunately. But I actually don't mind it with one missing head. It's got nice leaf elements just below it and a textured lawn using some of those angled plates. Got fencing going around it. The uh, nougat pillars are pretty cool with the profile bricks and topped with those balls and also the dish elements. A couple of fish right here in that sand green hat. Then we have our cemetery. A pumpkin, all sorts of headstones, a snake, a rat, a frog, and this fencing going around the courtyard is quite nice. It's topped by the planters, and it's framed at a nice angle. Looks really good. The building also has these drain pipes that add a nice accent to it as well. The building does look good from all angles and would look really good integrated into a city or just on a shelf as well. It is modular, so the floors will come apart. It does have an open back and it's loaded full of details. Let's have a look at all of those details. Inside this room, we have quite a bit of detail. We have a nice little piano there. Just behind that piano, we have a gold grandfather clock. There's also a purple wall there with the red blinds. And of course, those sand green windows. Inside the greenhouse, we've got some plants, also a coffin. There's a skeleton arm just poking out of that coffin there, and there's a raven on top. On the purple wall there, we have some sticker elements that says Tomb Sweet Tomb, also the skull. Then we have some print tiles that we threw in there as well, along with the hidden Mickey. I love the different colors that are used on the floor, that dark red color, and just the way it transitions into the purple wall is really neat. Also right here, you can see our entrance that can either lead up the stairs or into the main hall. Here's a detailed look at a couple of our mini builds. First we have our gold grandfather clock. Note that the clock actually goes to 13, which is pretty neat. I like this mini build. Looks really good. And then of course we also have our piano with the candle on top. 
The next room here represents the famous elevator with the stretching portraits. I really like how we have this added detail here. It is fantastic. You can just grab this right here and pull this whole wall up and there's the stretching portraits. This is a brilliant addition to the set. It's fantastic. Also behind that, the wall is built using dark blue, white, red, and reddish brown. And it just looks really good. It's an awesome mechanism that just uses some garage door sort of sliding panels and also some modified plates with the slides. So it just slides up and down and has a little track. Also, we've got some nice details with some flame elements in front of the stretching portraits. The most detailed room on the ground floor is for sure the dining hall. There are so many great mini builds in here. It is packed with detail. A really nice organ right here. A couple photos just beside that there with some spiders and spider webs. There's our front entrance. A beautiful dining room table here with very detailed chairs. Just beside that, we have a fireplace with some green flames and also some candlesticks. Also, the flooring detail has to be noted as well. There is a subfloor underneath that's created using jumpers and one by one studs, and then you're able to put these dark tan tiles in that diamond form. It just looks awesome. When you remove all the mini builds, you can really see how cool that floor is. It's absolutely fantastic. Also, you can see the fireplace with the green flames and the custom sticker piece above that as well. Also, there's some nice details with the curtains and some different mantles throughout the room. And there's a close-up image of that portrait on the wall there as well. I love how the walls are constructed using all of these unique pillars. It really looks awesome and just like the Haunted Manor. Having a detailed look at our first mini build here, it's the organ. Got the gold pipes there, the bat, a place for the notes, the keys. And look at that. There's a spider web clung to it with one of our portraits suspended in the spider webs. And that just fits right in here loosely. Like most of our stuff here fits loosely into the Haunted Manor. However, you could fix that by putting some jumpers on the base floor because sometimes when these things move around, it can be a little bit annoying. But it's nice to be able to pull these mini builds out to have a detailed look at them. We also have a purple chair, and that just goes right back here beside the fireplace. And here's our dining room table. It uses that really nice green color, and I like the use of the modified one-by-one -one plates with the uh, tooth. That dining room table gets four of these chairs. However, I will say it's very hard to fit two on either side. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but you do get four of them. And then we also get two of the head chairs and that will use that shield tile piece and those go on the ends of the table. However, it can be a little bit of a nightmare to get all of these chairs fitted into this area and have them not falling all over the place because there's no studs holding them in place. I mean, they're really good builds, but they tend to become quite a mess. Also, we get a little stool here for our organ and a table as well with a nice lamp. And another mini build that you get is a really nice chandelier here that would be clung to the second floor and just floating over top of the table. So the chandelier goes on just like that above the dining room table and now we have our second floor. Our first room here where we have a red armchair, a nice little table there, also a bookshelf behind that that has a skull and a couple different busts on it. Really highly detailed bookcase. I really like the use of the busts and skull and also that spider there. There is a room just behind that there. All that's in there is a skeleton in the front window. The next room over here, we've got some nice added detail, including a custom sticker piece here. Got a large wedding cake and also a hat rack. And then we've got some spider webs in the next room over. Coming along this side here, we've got some more uh, added detail, including a really nice looking minifigure there and a long hallway as well. Really like the addition of that night minifigure. We also have the purple armchair here, and there's that long hallway. Now this long hallway is supposed to have candles sort of suspended in midair. However, I just didn't have the right adapter pieces to do that. It's actually supposed to come through that little slot there between the two slope elements, and there's supposed to be candles sort of floating in midair in the hallway. Also, there's supposed to be doors, black doors, on either side of the hallway two on each side actually. We just didn't have the right doors to do all four of them because ours were too tall. But you can see some of the doors in there. It's a little bit dark. 
But yeah, it's supposed to be a creepy hallway with some floating candles and two doors on either side, sort of leading to nowhere. Next to that, we have another hallway here, and this is actually where the stairs come up. And if you were to come up those stairs, there would be flames right overhead, as that is a nice fireplace. Just right there, there's the staircase, and there is the hallway. I like the use of the red and reddish brown tiles for the floor, or sort of carpet, running through the center of that hallway. All right, here we go. This is an awesome room. First off, we've got Madame Leota. Her head is right there in a nice dome element. We've got some candles on either side of her, and she's sitting on a really nice table. Now, this is supposed to be a scroll right here. However, we didn't have the right print piece to do it, so we decided to put the boy who lived from the uh, Harry Potter line. We had an additional newspaper, so we decided to put that there to replace the scroll print piece. Here's Madame Leota. She uses the hair from Moaning Myrtle and also uh, the headpiece from one of the CMF witches. Really nice table there with the candles and look at the legs on it. Really cool. And she sits right there on that nice area rug with the purple rounded tiles. And look at that. In the window there we've got a hidden Mickey. It's definitely a nice touch. So ours actually has two hidden Mickeys. So there we go, we've got all of the interior details of the Haunted Manor. Personally, my favorite is the elevator with the stretching portraits. That is an awesome addition. Also, Madame Leota up here, that is fantastic. Some great details in here and some great mini builds as well. This dining room is off the charts with the organ and also the dining room table. It looks incredible. So great work with the details of this set. So the Haunted Manor is a little bit of an awkward size. You can see it's sitting on a 48 by 48 gray base plate right here, which of course is 15 by 15 inches. It fits perfectly on this side here, but it's about, what, two, four, six studs short on this side, just a couple inches off. So it is rather difficult to fit into a Lego city, unless of course you're dealing with like a wide open city that you're building from scratch, but when you're dealing with a city like ours that is pretty much jammed, it's gonna prove a little bit difficult to fit into the surroundings, but we've got a pretty good idea. So there it is on a 48 by 48 gray base plate, and here it is placed on a four base plate quadrant, so two by two. So everybody, there we have the Lego Haunted Manor from Rebrickable.com. This is based off Disney's Haunted Mansion ride. It's going to look great in the LEGO City, and we plan on placing it in the LEGO City relatively soon. We've got a few ideas for it. Now, what are my thoughts in regards to the overall build itself? Aesthetically, this thing looks amazing. It has some amazing mini builds within, and the exterior just looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, it just speaks for itself. It just looks so good. I will say that the designer marked it as a master builder difficulty for a reason, the instructions definitely acted as a guideline, and they were really well done. However, they were not like your ordinary Lego instructions, and they weren't done to the best of the ability. And they, I've done a lot of rebrickable models. They weren't done perfectly. However, if you sort of get through that portion of it or you see past that and you use some of your own imagination to try and make it work, then it works out pretty good and it looks really good in the end. However, I will say it was one of the most challenging Lego rebrickable models I have ever done. Uh, when you're factoring in having to order all of the parts from scratch, uh, not integrating any Lego sets into it, uh, also having to sort of tailor the build as you go to make it work better and sort of follow the instructions that sort of jump all over the place. It's really hard to explain exactly what made it so difficult, but. I wasn't able to build this one live, whereas usually I build all of our rebrickable stuff live, but this one here had us jumping around and searching for parts and, and sort of struggling with the instructions to the point that we couldn't build it live. So it was a little bit challenging uh, in that regard, but we had a lot of fun building it and it's gonna look absolutely fantastic in the Lego city. Let me know what you think of this amazing Lego rebrickable model of the Haunted Manor by commenting below. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Thank you so much for coming on by and have yourselves a great one. Farewell.